I just wasted ten seconds of your life. Hello everybody and welcome back. I said welcome back in case you came directly from my previous video which explained about the account known as Tessinte, which basically is my Linux account, gaming account. Go over there if you want to see that stuff, but I'm going to show you how to create your own custom intro like this. Alright, so, now that I've got the explanation aside, it's time to open up Blender. You can go ahead and delete the default cube and make sure that we're using the Cycles Renderer. YouTube's max resolution is at 1080, however my YouTube videos don't really go above 720. So I'll set it to 1280 by 720, making sure that it's in this 16 colon 9 uh, YouTube resolution. That thing. I also like to keep the frame rate at 30. Just cause I do. That's just me. Since we're rendering a video, we want to make sure we have good video settings. You wanna, you'll know what these are from my tutorial on the video editor. Doo -doo -doo. And of course, we want to hear audio, so we'll have that on as well. Okay. One of the first things we want to do is make sure that we're in top view. By pressing the number pad 7, and then control alt number pad 0 to bring the camera into top view. I'll go ahead and save over this. Oh yes, another thing we want to do is make sure that we redirect the avi file to wherever we want it because in the temporary for a temporary folder it could easily get lost and I'm doing the back to the unedited uh, ways of my teaching to show you that there's really no secret hidden trick that I do off screen it's really very very simple so step number one make sure you have your own audio then go over to Blender Sequence, sequence Editor. Sequence Editor. <laughs> Sorry that I can't speak today. Go to Add Sound, then browse to it. Hmm. This one shall work for me. I'm going to try to copy it as best as I can. But anyway, listen to the audio back and forth until it starts where you want it to did it right there so to be safe seeing at frame 57 does the sound start sound to finish is okay so frame 53 52 54 okay I'll say it starts at right about 54 so I will take that arrow and drag it down to the green and then put that right at the beginning so it starts right there Making sure, of course, that we are on the first frame. Du -du -du. Bling. So, one, two, three. That's really where I need to end it. Quite simple. So now, even though you can't hear it... Actually, let me make it to where you can hear it. I was playing the audio back and forth, trying to get things to work to my liking, and this is what it sounds like now. Hmm, little too long, just slightly toward the very end, so I'll try 120. Let's listen to it now. That shall actually work out perfectly. Alright. So, for test renders, I like to keep the resolution at 25%, and since I'm using the Cycles render, also keep the render passes down to 1. Alright, now the next part is exceedingly, extremely simple. Seriously. Here's what we gotta do. Press Shift A, then go down to Text. We have just added in our own text. I can then scale it down, move it across the x-axis, 
go into edit mode to type in what you want. I'm going to say custom. Alright, sweet. I can then hit shift D to duplicate and drag it across the X axis. Rename it. And I have the other guy right there. So this guy's gonna light up. This guy's gonna light up. In fact, this guy is going to light up white. I'll make sure to check this to emission so that it, it's nice and bright, not dim. I'll also make sure to see that the world, pardon me, is all the way to black, so that they appear even brighter. Same thing for this guy, make it an emission. And this guy's actually going to be red. Pure red. No, I'll say green. Pure green. Alright, so. Just need one final word. And I'll rename it to... Tutorial. Alrighty then. And I shall make this pure red. But hang on. Now it's changed both of them. That's because I duplicated it so it shares whatever properties that it has, whether you set it to a mission or change the color or set an animation. It shares the thing. So how do I fix it? Well, for keyframes, you would have to manually remove them, either from here, if it's for an animation, or from the cyclist render if you're doing over here. But really for color it's quite simple. Just hit the two right there. Now it has its own palette. As you can see when I do this. I change that to white and that stays red. Actually now that I think I no, that's right. Okay, so obviously I don't want them all to shine up at the same time. But let's see what it look currently looks like. Alright, but they're not shining. So to get them to shine, basically using the same, exact same settings as the lightning tutorial, blur node that's set to fast Gaussian, and an add node or from color to add, blurring the original image, then combining it with itself so that it looks like it glows. Now we're working. I also like... Well, actually I just skip over the 40 because that seems just a little too excessive for text. Don't need text to be all that bright. Alright, now. That's a better result. Look at that. Again, I'll just say 40 is a little too bright. You can add it if you want. But yes, this is our basic setup. Don't need to change anything else at all. Now, here's the fun part. I don't want them all to appear at the exact same time. So what do I do? Well, first set them all to zero. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Which really the same ex exact same thing goes for when trying to animate. Just like, when you want them to appear? Well, let's see. Start for the first one. Okay, so it's in with, within the first 10 frames. I'm watching this and listening to the audio. So by frame 3, maybe? Yes, frame 3 is where I want this guy to go from 0 to 3. So I hit I after changing it to insert a keyframe. I also need to hit 0 and hit I to insert the keyframe there. Now it will fade to 3 and I'll say to go to frame 10 to where we go back down to 1. Alright, now I shall start rendering it just to make sure that this method works. I'll just say experimental because I can.
Okay, frames have clearly gone past where I've animated, so I'll stop it. And look for the file, which shall be at the desktop. It's named tut.avi. Definitely working. See, test renders are good, people. Alright. Though if you noticed right after which, it looked like a still image because the emission doesn't change. We wanted to pulsate. We're spending all this time rendering, we wanted to pulsate. How do we do this? Well, I've found that a really, really good way. Oops. It's very simple. Is that every 20 frames, so you buy 10, it's normal. So I need to go to frame 30. And you can change this to whatever you want, every 40 frames or whatever. But I say every 20 frames, I change it by 2. And they'll go by another 20 frames. And change it back down. Now it'll pulse. It's really that simple. And that's really the whole process, just timing and animating accordingly. Very, very simple. And just to prove to you that's the whole process, or that this process works, I should show just one more test render. Okay, so, can you hear it? 30. Yep, 30 will work. So by frame 30, actually, frame 34, I wanted to go to 3. Frame 30 is where you're going to start. Actually, I'll say frame 28 just to be safe. It's where you're going to start. So go to 0. And I'll say f just since you start at frame 34, I'll s round it off, go to frame 40, go back down to 1. Remember, remembering to hit I each and every time so that it stays changed. And again, if you, if you want to do the same for moving the text, just move it where... Actually, really, like I wanted to come in at frame 40. I'm not going to save over this part. Come in at frame 40, so I'll insert uh, location rotation, maybe even scale. And then go back a few frames. I'll say 3. And change it wherever I wish. Insert another keyframe. And now you see, it moves in time. But I don't want to do that. Luckily, I didn't save, so I can easily press Control Z. Well, didn't save and ex exit back out. But if you did make the mistake of saving, then go back and hit Remove Keyframes, which is right here. But anyway, I'm gonna save to stop the animation at frame 60, because this is a test render. and hit render the animation. And since we're at low resolution and low pass, it's, it's really going quite rapidly. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's really the entire process. Now I forgot to do a pulsating thing for the intro word. I'm actually going to do that later on, after I finish this video, so that I can put this intro right at the beginning. And again, I say you can easily increase or decrease the frame rate. It's very, really very, very straightforward and easy. How cool is that? It works. Did you see it? I'll do it like this. Alright. Though, like I said, the intro does appear to be a still image. Th but the custom word custom is definitely pulsing which is good it's excellent even it 
if you want faster pulsing, or even to time the pulsing, like I did in the Testing Ted intro, and in my intro, then it's the exact same thing, just time it. It's really not all that difficult, it's very, very easy. It's very simple, and that's really the whole process. And this is just one way. Blender is an excellent program, it's absolutely epic. All the things that you can do. This is just one incredibly simple way. And the intros that you can make are still pretty dang awesome. So go out there and make your own intro. And if you've made it based on this video, create a video response. Now watch it. It shall be awesome. Until next time, I shall see you again next video. Hopefully... Uh... I forgot what I was going to say. Thanks a lot. Well, see you next video. Until then, Shalom. Shalom Chavarim. How about that be my official intro and outro? Shalom Chavarim and Shalom Chavarim. Because <laughs> they mean the same thing. Well, not really. Shalom means hello and goodbye. How about this? Shalom Amigos. Alright, that'll work. Shalom Amigos. <laughs>